Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be departing from our castable 3D printing um, and looking more into general 3D printing with resins um, in a sculptural sense. So when it comes to assembling your 3D sculptures, um, there's a lot of different choices that you can make. Um, whether you're using a, like a super glue, um, epoxy, uh, some sandable, you know, Bondo type material. There's a variety of other choices that you have, but to get the absolute perfect fit in terms of, well, you know, the actual fit, how they fit together, uh, repairability, if there's any gaps that might need to be filled, um, and having that perfect color, that's using the actual resin itself. All we really need is something like this guy. This is an Ultrafire 502 UV flashlight. So the wavelength of this flashlight, according to the little thing, uh, is 395 nanometer. But it's advertised on Amazon as being good for 405 nanometer. Um, I don't think we need to get too specific about the wavelength because a lot of these resins are good for uh, a, a spectrum. They're not, like, it's not a wide spectrum, but being, I think, 10 nanometers off isn't bad. In other words, it's still going to work, and I've actually tried it, so I know it works. Um, but if you were to work with 385 nanometer, such as, uh, you know, like dental resins or the biocompatible stuff for DLP, then this is not going to work anymore because it's outside that range. Aside from fixing your resin models, they actually have quite a few other uses. Um, namely, as, as, as advertised, um, if you are in the desert, you can find scorpions with this stuff. I did know that, but it really doesn't cross my mind up here in Canada. We don't have scorpions. Um, you can also find uh, pet urine, and if you have pets and you're wondering what's that funky smell, well, this will help you find it. And just like general cleanliness, you can kind of, I've walked around my house and been shocked by the things I've seen, and uh, it, at least you know where to clean, right? It's kind of neat. Um, aside from that, in a more 3D printing sense, um, you see this bottle is, I'm not sure how well you can actually see it, but this bottle is really gross. Like, you always get resin leak around the lids, and it's, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. So I really should be wearing gloves. However, what I did was use the flashlight, and I just cured the outside of the bottle. So that leak, uh, that leak around the rim that you just can't get into is now hard, and hopefully it doesn't leak again when I go to pour resin back into the tank. Let's actually get into using this thing and fixing my model, because I want to be able to put this guy on the shelf in his rightful place, and hopefully he doesn't blend too much into my background. <laughs> so what are we going to be using? Well, pretty basic tools, honestly. Paper towel, just keep clean. Uh, if you had like a silicon mat or something, that might be ideal as well, but I don't. Uh, a bunch of Q-tips just to help swab this on. Uh, I'm probably gonna use these kind of like a paintbrush for larger amounts of resin. Uh, for the smaller amounts, which is what I'm really gonna be focusing on, uh, I have this little thing. I honestly don't know what it is. It's like a little pin vise, I think is the word, um, with a broken drill bit in it. And basically I'm just gonna be able to dip and have the tiniest drop on the end, apply it exactly where I want it, and then we'll hit it with the flashlight and that's it, it'll harden. Ideally, of course, you should also have a mask. I'm gonna go put that on as soon as I'm you know, not talking and then we'll get things rolling. Um, I, for this one, am going to be using the resin that it was printed in, which was Soraya Sculpt. I uh, really, really enjoy this resin. It just prints beautifully. It shows details. Uh, and above all as well, it's also heat resistant, which for me is awesome because then we can take vulcanized rubber molds of jewelry items. So uh, I also forgot to mention uh, we need gloves. I don't have any nitriles or latex here. Unfortunately, they're all at home. Um, and I also have this little 5 Alive cap that we're going to put some resin into so that we don't have to deal with the entire bottle. And naturally, of course, work in a, a space that doesn't have any UV or else this will just start to harden up much too quickly. So I'm just going to be pulling out tiny little drops at a time. D biggest downsides I can see by doing this uh, relative to a glue or an epoxy is that you don't get a whole lot of penetrative depth with the light. It's, it's going to be a very superficial bond, almost. Like, 
it's it's not going to be as strong as some super glue. And when it comes to exposure time, I'm definitely pro like overexposing it. Because um, if you think about it, when it's during the printing, the printing times are pff, maybe two seconds a layer, especially for Sculpt. Sculpt is a, a very high polymer resin. And it's very, very fast printing, especially on the SL1S, which is what this came off of. I'm just putting a little bit of extra resin behind the foot where no one's ever going to see anyway because I want to just give it a little bit of a reinforcement. And there we go. So for something like this on the bottom, I honestly have no idea how this artifact happened. Um, we can start to try to fill that layer by layer. You don't want to just like put a whole blob inside this, this void because it's not going to harden. It doesn't have that UV penetrative ability. So we're just going to add little bits at a time, make sure it's even. And we'll just cure that one area. And then we'll add some more and we'll just keep going until it's fixed. All right, so we're just finishing this up. Just a little bit of extra material on top to kind of give it a little bit of a bubble effect, just so I have something to sand away and I can make sure that it's actually flat. I'm going to get right up close and hold it there just for a little bit extra time because I want to see if I can get that depth. Just in case there's anything underneath that hasn't quite solidified yet, the last thing I want to do is sand it and find that there's a bubble of liquid resin underneath that didn't quite harden. So put that on top and I think that's good. Now obviously with gloves I can't really tell but it does not feel sticky. It just feels smooth. It just feels a little different. I don't see any markings on it, so I'm pretty confident saying that is fully cured and this is ready for some finishing work. One other little thing to note about this flashlight in particular is, is the UV harmful to your eyes? I got really mixed information. Um, they say that this wavelength, the 405 nanometer wavelength, is harmless to your eyes, but at the same time, the warning label says don't shine it in your eyes. So I just kind of assume that it is dangerous. Um, don't look at it. If you have some orange tinted, or even just sunglasses, frankly, orange tinted UV uh, safety glasses, you know, like they see on like CSI and stuff, um, that would be ideal. But I'm pretty sure your sunglasses would be just fine, assuming they're UV rated. Um, I'm not worried too much about it, but it is something worth considering for sure. So we're actually going to finish up this dragon and then we'll, um, we'll show you guys the full results. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope that someone out there found this useful because um, not only for, you know, just the sake of not having to reprint, uh, you know, just for the tiniest little flaws, this could be a major saver, whether it's bubbles, cracks, breaks or, you know, joining things together. Um, this can apply to the jewelry industry when you're making a, you know, a model for vulcanization or just a prototype for your client. Or if you're into sculpture and doing things like this, again, this can apply to you. So 
Uh, again, we have a link down below for this flashlight from Ultrafire. I think it's really cool. Um, and like I mentioned before, if you have pets or just want to see how disgusting your house is, well, this is another option to try that as well. So I will see you guys in the next video.